In case you have watched our German videos in the past, do you remember that about two years ago we made a video discussing the pros and cons of GitHub Copilot? If so, you may also remember that I said in that video that criticism of Copilot came up very quickly. And one of the key points of criticism was that Copilot could lead to legal issues under certain circumstances as it does not generate new code from scratch for every situation every single time, which is what the initial impression at least may be. Instead, Copilot occasionally and literally reproduces code from the training data. And if you don't remember the statement from back then, it's not a problem because you can just watch the appropriate video once again and you can find the link to it as always up here in the info card, but please note that it's in German. And the point where it's about the legal problems is at 4.57. Well, back then it was just a statement I made without any specific evidence. I simply had taken it from other sources, but about 10 days ago I had a quite shocking experience with Copilot. I caught Copilot right in the act stealing. And what I find especially remarkable about this is that the case is actually reproducible. That is, it can be repeated at will over and over again. And that's exactly what we're talking about today. In this sense, hello and welcome to our new weekly. Well, where do we start? I'm currently reading a book which I find very well done and about which we will definitely make a separate video. Nevertheless, I will tease it briefly. I'm currently reading Writing an Interpreter in Go by Thorsten Ball. The book, as the title already suggests, is about how to write an interpreter, kind of as a precursor to a compiler, for a programming language, specifically in Go. And the book is quite interesting, it's very practical and very pragmatically structured, and overall I'm quite fond of it. In the first chapter, it starts off with writing your own Lexa to break down the example language Monkey, which has been specially invented for this book into tokens. And then there's a little bit of explanation, followed by a small code example, followed by more explanation and another code example and so on, alternating back and forth. And along the way, a larger project emerges, namely the desired interpreter. And so far, so good. A few days ago, I met with a developer friend of mine. We talked about this and that, mostly general stuff, as developers like to do. And somehow we ended up talking about Lisp. And again, we have made videos about this language in the past, for example, the one we have linked for you up here in the info card, but please note that it's in German as well. And during our conversation, we thought it would be nice as sort of an exercise to write an interpreter for Lisp. And in that context, I mentioned that I'm currently reading the aforementioned book and we spontaneously decided to give it a try that day. So that we wouldn't have to start completely from scratch, I opened the book or the ebook in the Kindle app on my iPad, we started Visual Studio Code and I began setting up the project. That is, first I initialized the Go project and then just did what the book suggested, namely added a new file named token.go in the token directory to the project and defined the token package in it. I typed the first actual line of code from the book, namely type token type string and then Copilot already suggested the next line of code to me, namely type token struct open curly bracket. And I accepted that. And then came the next line from Copilot, type token type. And I accepted that too. Next line, literal string, accepted and closed curly bracket. And then comes the next block where Copilot suggests defining a series of constants. And the first constant it suggests is illegal equals illegal. Second constant. EOF equals EOF. And then it suggests a comment, namely identifiers plus literals. And I could go on like this forever, but the point is, this is line by line, character by character, exactly the code from the book, and it goes on for pages. And at that moment, that was dramatic to us because I could literally predict with the book in my hands what Copilot would suggest next, or in other words, Copilot generated exactly zero code from what it has learned, but the AI simply reproduced exactly that what it had previously received as training data. And I find this quite shocking because it raises the question, if this is the case in this example, how often is it the case as well in other situations? So when and in which situations does Copilot actually generate code independently on its own and when is it merely reproducing the work 
of other developers one-to-one. -one. In normal everyday operation this question hardly arises. Either it's about trivial functions such as finding the minimum from a list of numbers. It's clear that this code already exists many times in the world and there's also the question of how bad or yeah how yeah how bad a copy of such code is since it would be particularly difficult to write it on your own. Here the true value might be less the code itself but more in the efficiency and the time saved. But what if it's about more complex problems and tasks where one initially assumes that Copilot is actually providing its own creation? Who guarantees me that Copilot doesn't always copy and adopt foreign code? In other words, is code ever generated from scratch? Because basically this scenario in which one can now see so vividly how Copilot copies or steals seems like an AI that is simply overfitted to the maximum. That is an AI that has simply learned all the code it has ever seen and now just reproduces it according to the respective situation. And that I think raises the question of whether one can still use such a tool without concerns. I mentioned that in the video back then and we also made another video about the ethical and moral problems of Copilot in the meantime and you can find this video linked up here in the info card but again it's in German. And my question would now be what do you think of this? Were you aware of this? Have you just heard rumors so far or do you know other cases where Copilot has actually copied code in a provable and reproducible way? And please write your opinion and your experiences with this in the comments below. I would be very interested to know if you know of any further especially reproducible examples. In any case, regardless of this, I hope you enjoyed today's video and if so, please share it with your colleagues. And having said that, the only thing that remains to me is to wish you a great Monday and a good start to the new week. Take good care of yourself, stay healthy and we'll see each other again in the next video. In this sense, have a nice day. Bye.